Good morning. With Randy Creek from Mount Carroll Missionary Baptist Church, 318 Denmark Street in Goldsburg, North Carolina. And our pastor is Reverend Dr. Winfrey Gallon Jr. And our leading lady is Patricia Gallon. We thank God for uh, you tuning in and just praying along with us, reading the Sunday school along with us, and just giving God the praise, the glory, and honor that's due unto his name. Because uh, Psalm 92 says a good thing to give praise unto our God. And I just thank you for uh, God allowing us to wake up another Sunday morning. This is uh, the first Sunday in September, and I just thank God the children has gone back to school, the teachers. Uh, I think they're in need of teachers, but I thank God that God will make a way out of no way, and that's his promise to all of us. So let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We just bless your holy and your righteous name for allowing us to wake up one more day to give your name the praise and the glory and the honor that's due unto you. We thank you for allowing us to come to church one more time to lift up your holy and your righteous name, God. And if there is anyone sick among us or there in the world, God, we just uh, ask you to touch their hearts, their minds, their body, their spirit. Oh God, if they have, they have lost hope, God, I just thank you for the word. The word is our hope today, God. The word is our hope today. Money came by it, and all the vices in the world came by our hope. But Lord, we put our trust in you, God. We ask you to lead God and direct our path. And those that's traveling on the highways and the byways, God, we ask you to cover them under your blood, protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger, Lord God. And let us be peaceful to one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And today our lesson comes from uh, the first book of the Bible, the Old Testament, which is, which is Genesis, starting with the 12th chapter, uh, verses 1 through 7. And the title is Unbroken Promises. Uh, our key verse is, And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And our lesson starts out with uh, the Lord telling Abram that he wanted him to leave his, his own uh, familiar place and he wanted him to go to where he was going to send him. Uh, the land of Canaan. And the land of Canaan is, is, is full of milk and honey. It's uh, where new life and new hope and new peace was. And so God told Abram, uh, to take him and his family and go. In verse, I'm going to read verses 1 through uh, 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. So God wasn't literally just saying, I want you to go over there and, and um, just be over there. But God said he was going to bless him. He would make him a great nation. I will bless those who bless you and the ones who curse you, I will curse. And in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So, I, I, you know, it, it's, this chapter is all about faith, trusting in God. Because when Abram was 75 years old, and when you're 75 years old and God speaks to you and tells you, I want, to, I want you to get up, go from your country, take your kindred, your uh, wife, leave your father's house, and go to the land that I will show you. At 75 years old, you know, uh, I can imagine, because I look at our age, uh, I'm 72, and, and uh, there's been a change in my life. And, and you have a, uh, because we're human, we have a little fear and say, Lord, where am I going? Where, what am I going to do? What, who is over there? What, what, what is in there for me? But God said, I promise you that I will <clears throat> make you a blessing. And so then we, we have to, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Because I think a lot of things that trigger us to not 
to want to go forward is not knowing. God tell us in the beginning, I want you to go. We, we want to say, Lord, what, what am I doing in the middle? And what am I doing in the end? God said, if, if you already knew this, then you're not walking in faith. So he's, he's telling us, if I tell you to do something, I already know what I'm not going to put you in something that is going to hurt you, but I'm going to put you in something that's going to bless me and bless you and bless the people around me. So sometimes we have to walk in blind faith in order to get where we got to go in God. Because if we knew it, we wouldn't go. But there's going to be some trials and tribulations along the way. But if we knew everything, only God knows everything. He don't want us to know everything, even with the word. We can read the word on Monday, and God will bless us. And we can read the word on Tuesday, and God will bless us again. So we got to, we got to trust God, because he is our eternal hope. He is the one that saves us. He's the one that, 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 uh, when our children go off to college uh, and they're 17 and 18 and they don't know anything about life, but but God said, I'm the same God that raised her or him in North Carolina and you're going to send them to Pennsylvania. He said, I'm the same God. You just got to keep on praying and believing that I will, I will make a way out of no way. So that's that's what I, I, I believe a, April uh, and his wife and, and Lot, he took his, his uh, nephew Lot because Lot's father had died. And so, you know, a lot of times we as, as older, the older generation, uh, even someone close, when someone dies, then you, you step in and be that guardian. And that's what, that's what Abel was. He was um, Lot's guardian because he had lost his father. And so as, as Abel go on and, and do what the Lord, he picks up, packs up all this stuff and, and allow God to, to lead God and direct him and show him uh, as he go along the way, him and his new, uh, new uh, road back to, to the new land. And so as he was going to that new land, uh, Abel got into a little bit of trouble. But you know, even before he left, to go to the new land. Uh, they said that the land that he was in, it was there was uh, worshiping idol God. And you know, God knows what's around us. And then God, because God knows us, he moves us out of, of, of that evil direction and then he put us in a place to go to where it's gonna be a, a, a blessing to, to us and a blessing to him. Because he, he knows he knows our, our our beginning and he knows our ending. Like Reverend Roy said, he's an apple and a man of the beginning and the end. So God knows all about us. So you know he. Um, I remember when this um, I was in uh, I was a young Christian and this man uh, he was a he was a uh, he could sing. I mean he could he remind me of uh, Brother George. I mean, he could say uh, at, a, at a beat of a hat, and uh, but he was out there in the world, and, and he had an addiction. But then the God, God would deliver him, and he would come back, and he would sing that same song. And, and then one day he went into the hospital, and he didn't he didn't come back because he passed. And I asked God, I said, God, and we can ask God questions because God knows us. And a lot of times, uh, people say, you can't talk to God. And like, yes, yes, you can. You can talk to God. If you don't understand, you can talk to God about the most intimate, the most personal, but most hurtful thing in life. And so I asked God, I said, God, why did he die? And he was, he was this and he was that. But God said, I knew what was ahead of him. I knew that that path was going to draw him back into that wrong thing. And so I had to take him. I had to give him rest. And, and so that's, that's when I, I started talking to God about different things. Because I didn't understand. He was, 
Because I thought he was a, uh, even though the addiction is there, I, but I saw him as, as this great singer, you know, but it's not about our greatness, but it's about God's greatness. And, and I just thank God that he knows, he knows what we go through. And sometimes he moves us out in order to, to bless us so that the enemy that's trying to attack us in that area, God said, I need you to travel maybe a thousand miles, maybe 500 miles, maybe 300 miles, but I need you to get out of that land. And that's what, that's what Abram, Abram did. He got out of that land with his, his wife, Sarai, and they, they went to that new land where God said he would bless them. And then it skips to verse, uh, to chapter 15. But along the way, um, there was famine in the land, in Egypt, and uh, Abram, he traveled, and when he traveled, he, he came upon uh, I think it was Bethel on the, the west side of the east. No, that was, that was before he got there. But he went to this, this uh, Pharaoh and he uh, he told him that, that Sarai was his, was his uh, sister, which was true, but she was his wife and he lied. He lied because he was afraid. He wasn't trusting, he wasn't trusting that God would make a way out of no way. Even when we get into a, a situation that that makes us seem so small, but but see, God still has that. He still has that pathway for us, and and we, as we walk in that path, even when the truth uh, makes someone else mad, but as long as we walk in the truth of God, God is gonna bless us, and that's what what Abram did, and he almost it, it was a deception. Uh, and he would ask Sarah to, to do the same thing, lie with them. And it said, and Abel failed to trust God to deliver him out of any trouble that might result from being completely truthful shows that Abel's faith is still a matter of personal struggle. So we struggle. We struggle. And if you say that you don't struggle, then you better go check are you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost? Because life is a struggle. I, I don't, it, it, it doesn't matter whether you, because, you know, a lot of times we think when we read about, um, uh, we go into the Bible and we read about all the blessings and all the, even in, in the life now, um, we think that there was no struggle, but there was a struggle. There was a struggle. You know, with Moses, Moses, said, Lord, I, I stutters. And, and uh, Isaiah said, I, Lord, uh, Jeremiah said, Lord, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a young child. But God said, I know who you are. So don't tell me who you are. I know who you are. But I still have a job for you to do because you're my chosen vessel. And so that's what it's all about. And, uh, you know, I think... They said Sarah was pretty, a, a beautiful woman, but I said she probably was beautiful like uh, uh, Leah Horn. You know, she was a beautiful lady. Uh, Angela Bassett, you know. So, you know, I, I'm sure that uh, he thought the men were going to attack her. Dude. And they, they were, but, but, but because of, the, of, of God, she was protected. But Abram didn't believe that, but God had to show him. I'm still God. So then we go to uh, chapter 15, which says, starts out with, it's a shield and a great reward. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped over verse 4, 5, and 7. So Abel departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. See, I was always saying, Abel was 70, 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah, Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. See, land, Canaan was that land with milk and honey, you know, a prosperous. 
And verse 7 said, And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So Abram is going on. He's trusting God, even though he got into a little bit of trouble. But he said, I'm, I'm going to go on because God has promised me. Uh, my father has died and, and I got to go on and, and do what the Lord has told me to do. So when they get to chapter uh, 15, uh, Abram was questioning God. God, you said I was going to have a seed. Where is my seed? I'm uh, 75, 76, and my wife, she's old. Lord, how is this going to happen? And God was telling him, don't worry about it. If, if I promise you that you will have a seed to come out of your loin, then that is my promise. I don't, I don't have to lie. I'm not going back on my promise. So you just got to trust me in this. And it, verse uh, 1 says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid. So he was telling him, he said, Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Your reward. Because you, you left your, your familiarity uh, uh, hometown and you brought your family and now you're going to a place that you don't know anything about but he said trust me you're going to be great I'm not going to prompt you something then take it back I'm not that man but Abel said oh Lord God what will you give me so uh, Abel was questioning God for I continue to I continue to challenge and the heir of my house Elijah of the Maccas. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring. So I think Abram was kind of a little bit upset then. You know, he said, Keep promising me this, God, but I don't have no offspring. And so it go on and said, He said, So a slave born in my house is going to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man should not be your heir. No one but your own, very own, shall be your heir. So God was trying to comfort him. He said, I promise you, you're going to have an heir that comes out of your lawn. And it's going to be born from of Sarah. I understand you're old, but you're not old in my eyesight. If I promise you that, it's going to happen. You just got to trust me. You got to believe that. Because I think a lot of times we get a certain age and we begin to cripple ourselves. We, I know that we can't um, jump up and down like we used to, but we can still stand up and, and do what we got to do. We may not be able to, uh, you know, when we're young, our, our body, it, it moves very quickly, but when we get older, you got to move a little bit slower, but that's okay. We're still in the land of living. Don't give up on life because God has not given up on us. And so, I think April was, was beginning to, to feel a little ease in his body and say, I, I, I got to trust God. So, if I trust God, it's going to happen. But I, if I keep doubting God, then it's going to take long. So, I got to trust God. I got to, I got to uh, gird up my loins and I got to put on that whole arm of God. And I got to, I got to walk by faith and not by sight. I got to. I got to gird up and I got to trust God. I, I know what I see in, 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 in looking at myself. I, I'm, I'm older now. I might have a few wrinkles and everything going to work like the same. But, but God said, if I promise you this, then I'll do it. And so that's how we are in, in, this, in this life. When we get older, don't, I, I remember when, when I was a, a younger teenager, and I would look at my mom and my mom at that in, in generation. At 72, when my mother didn't make it to 72, she was 67 when she passed. And but I just look at that generation and they were they were literally old. They were older. They they lived up to that uh, that generation of that age. They they were even though I have a rocking chair now, but I don't I don't go out there and, and just, you know, and say, oh, Lord, this is it. No, no, I, 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 I can't do this and I can't do that. And some of them did that. 
And but 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 that's what they did. But I, I thank God that even though we can have a rocking chair now, but we don't have to we don't have to stay and lay and die from it because God still have life in us. And I thank God for that that generation because they stood on the word. They they stood allowed us to stay on their backs because they went through a lot, but they didn't give up. They they was a praying generation, but they just that that age they was older than we are. We we are we have a, a new mindset, and I thank God for that. Even though we're older, and I'm set, like I said, I'm 72 years old, but I, I still stand for God. I still do what I can do. I still give God the praise, the glory, and honor. I, I exercise His body. I, I, I don't eat right like I suppose, but I'm trying. But, you know, I give God the praise, the glory, and honor. Just trust in God. That's what it's all about. Have faith in God. And then verse 4 said, But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your own, very own, shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven, Abram, and count the stars. If you're able to count them, then he said to them, So shall your descendants be. He said, Abram, can, can you look up and say, One, two, five, and nine? He said, You can't do it. He said, so that's how your descendants will be. You're not going to be able to count them. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said unto him, I am the Lord who brought you out, you from Ur of the Chaldeans, to give you this land to possess. So God said, I didn't bring you just out to say, uh, yeah, this is your new home now. I brought you out because I want you to be a blessing to be a father of many nations. And so, um, I just thank God for the unbroken promises that not only speaking to, he spoke to Abel, but he's speaking to us to go into that new land, honor that new land. And when he tell you to go, we be afraid because of the unknown. But if we be afraid and still walk in the grace of God, then he'll bring us out to a place, he said, we'll be willing and obedient. He will give us the goods of the land. So I know all of us want the goods of the land. So we just got to trust God, believe God, and lay not our own understanding. And he said, he will bless us when we get up in the morning. He will bless us when we go to bed at night. Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the world and they that dwell right here. This uh, is the end of our Sunday school lesson. I pray that the word has touched your heart, that you trust God, have faith in God, and know if he sends you somewhere to go, that he already knows the path that you're going to take. He knows that sometimes there's going to be bumps in roads, sometimes there's going to be hills to climb, sometimes there's going to be valleys. But he said, still, trust in me, and I'll bring you through. And we invite you to uh, our church service on today at 1030. Reverend Elaine Powell will be bringing the word. And we just pray that you bring your praise and let us praise God together. Uh, we pray for Pastor Gavin and Lee Lady that absent that wherever they are, that God is blessing them in the name of Jesus. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for one more day. We thank you and we give you praise, glory, and honor for all you do and all that you're going to do, God. We just thank you for your mercy and for your kindness, oh God. We just thank you for creating us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit. And we also ask you to, to bring your face masks and uh, your temperature going to be checked. And we also have sanitizers. So be blessed today and enjoy the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.